Because the only thing we do when we cook around here is go as absolutely over top as possible. This week, we're cooking a full spread for Thanksgiving. Potato pancakes, we got green beans, I'm soaking a turkey, we've got smoked mac and cheese, and I'm gonna make a three foot long potato masher. Let's go. So the first thing we need to do is get the bird prepped. Now, fortunately, I sent Jordan to the store and all he could get was what we're calling this fat chicken. It's a nine pound turkey and they only had nine pounds and according to Jordan, 22 pound turkeys. We typically would fault on the side of massive, but for this instance, we went with this guy. I normally get like a 12 to a 14, 15 pound bird because when we, when we, what we're gonna do is spatchcock it third best word ever. Actually, it's probably the best word ever. And that's gonna cut a couple pounds out. Um, so, let's do that. We'll get some seasoning on this thing. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna keep the, the uh, breasts from drying out. We've actually made a decision. Spatchcock is the second best word in the English language. The first is a word that's not appropriate for this YouTube channel. What a spatchcock is, is we're gonna cut out, this is the, um, this, I think this is the, the back because we have the breast, these are the breasts. And what it's gonna allow me to do is open the bird up and it actually cooks much faster. I prefer to cook any sort of poultry this way because it doesn't take as long. So, these are kitchen shears. Make this a whole lot easier. The only problem with these kitchen shears is my big ass hands, they like, they're like painful to use. I need sissy hands. I don't wanna hear any comments anymore. I want you guys to know how much anxiety I have over using this wooden cutting board to prep on. I get a lot of comments where it's like, oh, you're a woodworker and you don't have a wooden cutting board. It's like really not good to cut raw meat on wood. So when I die, this is why, and I hope all you trolls are happy. She's got a good tone to her. The rule of thumb is typically to buy, or to, to cook a bird that says uh, one pound per person, because when it shrinks and stuff. So I hope you guys aren't hungry. <laughs> to season this old girl, we're going with the a Sweet Heat Rub from Pit Boss, one of Sam and Mai's favorites. Should be a delicious combination. Let's go. So the next part of this I'm gonna do is create what's called a bacon lattice. That's a terrible piece. I need the, give me a bowl or some tray or something else. Just give me the bowl, I don't care. Thank you. <laughs> what happens here is the breasts of the bird will tend to dry out. There's no fat in, in, in the breast meat on any, any bird, poultry, chicken, excuse me, chicken, turkey, uh, if you're, if you're Jordan and you love yourself a Cornish hen. So you gotta like try to, you know, add some fat back in or keep that from, from burning. So we're gonna use a bacon lattice. Why? Because it's cool. Two, because who doesn't like to play with their bacon? So you just go under, over. Man, I should've left this <laughs> bacon in the fridge. It's like super soft. Smokers at 250, should take about 15 minutes per pound, it should be about two hours. Put all that effort into like keeping my hands clean and then I just take the gloves off, like a, like a chump. Our friends are here. No, really? They're here. Hell yeah, let's go. So. In case my food sucks, we invited some pros here. Yins might remember from the pizza peel when we went up to <laughs> my cousin <laughs> Vinny's. <laughs> We've got Luke and Zach from Blue Sparrow. They're gonna crank out some sides. Let's go. All right, so what are Yins thinking? So we have a couple different things that we're gonna be doing. Uh, clarifying some butter here for a kimchi hollandaise that we're gonna do on 
blackened uh, green beans. Blackened and green beans. We're gonna do a Thai cranberry sauce, which will be more kind of like a relish, not like something that comes out of a can. Uh, we yeah, got we some hate potatoes cans. going for, we're gonna do some smash cakes Ooh. with pickled red peppers, uh, a secret spice that is mixed up over there. Uh, <laughs> Korean <Wait>. chilies. Se <laughs> secrets? <laughs> Sam hates secrets. I don't know if you guys I know mean, this about Sam, but there's no secrets. Um, well, well, we'll go into it. The problem is, is that I just don't remember how I made it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> so it's a su it's so surprise well. spice. It's, it's surprise, surprise spice. spice. And then in, Dude, uh, I love it. Very Blue Sparrow fashion, uh, we brought some of our house-made baguettes for dinner time. Perfect. I love it. Let's rip. What are we doing, kids? Mashed potatoes. Well, so you got yourself a nice little sissy fork there. It's perfect for this. I'll be right back. So we've got like 15 pounds of potatoes and these rookies brought this bitch ass little masher. So we've got some 3 8 stainless rod and we're gonna make the masher of all mashers. Put your ass into it. It's <laughs> Give her hell. Blah balls. <laughs> Alright, children. So now we have, I don't know, smashy thing. <laughs> so now we need uh, a handle. Let's see how poorly I can turn something. I can't believe these beans. Like, I barely am putting any effort into this at all. And we have some pretty serious mashed potato action. Like, he's, I'm he's three strokes in three and strokes. done. 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 Mashed. We gotta name this. Thing. All right, so here's what we want. We need comment. We need you to tell us what we should name the gratuitous mash thingy we just created down below. Best name, I'll send you a, a shop right. All right, kiddos, so we've got some water boiling. We upgraded a little bit in here because we're smoking and I only got that thing at 250. I can't really boil water on the smoker. So we got this, what is this called? This is an induction hot pad. Eh, whatever, cooktop, that's what we're looking for. Water's boiling on this. If you guys are interested in one of these, I got a link in the description. First things first though, you want your water to always taste like the ocean. So we got plenty of salt, get that in there. We're using cava toppy because I'm a greasy Italian. Steam. Sam steamed her up. So we're using cava toppy because I like the, the swirl here and then it's got these like veins in it to hold up. The, the stuff man, pretty good. Always eat it raw. Yeah, eat it raw. These are all still attached, so we're gonna use them attached. Little tip to keep your a spaghetti from sticking, get it stirring and moving right after, immediately after you drop it. Don't put oil in your water either. Real Italians don't do that. Okay, so, because we're in the shop and I don't have a colander, we do have a colander. We have two colanders. Pasta's al dente. Because you want it, it's gonna finish in the smoker, which means it doesn't need to be fully cooked. Just close. So we're gonna get this out of here and then we're gonna get to the, the bacon and the cheese, and potentially bulldogs. All right, so I've got some of the bacon, same bacon we latticed with, you know, bringing the flavors across the board. Um, then we're gonna cook this down, and then we'll get to making what's called a crew, Spanish and French. See what I did there? America. And then, uh, and then this will be done. We're ready to go in the smoker.
All right, so we're gonna make a roux now. We got a half a cup of, a half a stick of butter over medium heat. And then once that melts down, we'll add some flour, get her whisker doodling. We don't have a whisk. We're not making a whisk. <laughs> I'll just use a fork. <laughs> All right, so we got three kinds of cheeses here. I bought these pre-shredded because we're in the shop, but if you're cooking this at home, don't buy pre-shredded cheese. It has cornstarch on it, and that'll add to the thickness of it. But we're going with a sharp cheddar here, save some for the top. The cheddar will give it flavor. Mozzarella, the mozzarella is what'll make it nice and stringy. And then Gouda. I'm a big fan of the Gouda cheese. And like I said, if you're ever curious on that like white, whatever kind of stuff that's on um, bagged cheese. That's what it is, it's cornstarch. It'll just make it, a, it adds like a thickness to it. Some people like it, I'm just not a fan. All right, check out our cheese assals here. Here's my secret ingredient, nutmeg. Once again, not in the house, so I don't have it fresh. But yeah, a little bit of nutmeg uh, brings the flavor up, up I don't know, I, I'm, Personally, a big fan and, and really, really like it. Probably like half a teaspoon. Get that stirred in. You see that? Get that fragrance, Sam. Get that in your nose. It smells good, huh? It smells good. <laughs> oh, need salt. Gotta watch with the salt because there's salt, bacon salty. That's good. Okay. Bacon back in. Clean spoon, please. Oh, that, that should be illegal. Pretty good. Okay. All right. Everybody in the bath. So that's gonna be a wrap on cooking. Last thing left to do is feed the peoples. So really wanna thank you guys for tuning in. If you wanna see more Shop Chef, we've got that here, or stick around and watch some more ridiculous B-roll. Let's go. So, <laughs> verdict, probably the best thing all of us will agree will be this kimchi butter that Luke here came up with on these green beans, right? We're loving this stuff. We're putting it on the bread. It's really good on the green beans as well. Uh, everything you made, killer dude, appreciate you. Thank you guys, love it. Turkey came out pretty good because it was basically just a chubby chicken. <laughs> Not a ton of flavor got into it, but I would say all in all, by the amount that's left, everyone dug it. And then Ben will be sleeping in the mac and cheese. So I would say this is a W for the first ever shop Thanksgiving. I uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in. And we will catch you next video where we're going to have a little competition. So you're going to want to subscribe.